So let's walk through some unknown cases now. This is somebody that had a history of anterior uveitis in the past. Looking through their CT, we can see that there are multiple tiny nodules and masses within the lung parenchyma. We can also see that there are some areas of architectural distortion with a little bit of traction bronchiectasis and bronchial wall thickening. And we see that the disease is you know, fairly diffuse throughout the lung parenchyma. So how would we characterize these nodules? So at first glance, you can see that these nodules are solid and well-defined. So that could really be seen with either um, miliary, perilymphatic, or central lobular, so it's not particularly helpful. Some of these nodules do appear to be sparing pleural surfaces, like in this area in here. You may be wondering, are these tree and bud opacities? And that's totally reasonable. Based on this one area, I think I would have a really hard time knowing, am I looking at tree and bud opacities? But really the key thing with this case is to look for that fissural and pleural involvement. And when we look at the fissures and pleural surfaces here, notice if we look at this minor fissure, look how many tiny dots are along this minor fissure. There's tiny dots all throughout the course of the minor fissure and extending onto the major fissure. That is not good for central lobular disease. It's not good for central lobular disease. So once you have involvement of the fissures, like in this case, that tells you that you're probably not looking at a finding that's predominantly central lobular. Now, you know, could this person also have a little bit of a central lobular disease, like a small airway infection? That's possible, right? But when we see this, you know, all this fissural involvement, that really should point us more towards either a perilymphatic or a miliary process. Now, deciding between those two, again, we have to decide, do we think that that's more diffuse or more clustered? And in this case, again, it's kind of throughout the lung parenchyma, but if we focus on, say, like the right upper lobe, notice how some of these nodules are really just kind of in some areas, but there's areas that are appear largely spared. Now that we look closer at them, and we kind of zoom in to, say, this area in here, what we're actually seeing is a septa and then we're seeing little tiny nodules studying along the septa, creating a line, right? And when we see lines of nodules, that should make us think of a perilymphatic process. So now we're seeing nodules along the fissural and pleural surfaces. We're seeing lines of nodules, again, telling us that it's perilymphatic. And when we see that, our top two differential diagnoses, remember, should be sarcoidosis or perilymphatic disease related to lymphangitic carcinomatosis. We don't see a lot of smooth septal thickening now. The absence of smooth septal thickening should then lead us away from lymphangitic tumor and more towards sarcoid. In addition, we have this mass up here. So now is this mass related to a separate process like a lung cancer or is it related to sarcoid? I think based on just this image, it would be really hard to know the answer to that. You'd have to use comparison imaging to see if it was stable or if it was gradually enlarging over time. In this case, this nodule was actually stable for several years. Again, you could see larger confluent nodules in the setting of sarcoidosis. Remember, we saw that with the galaxy sign, where you have little tiny nodules along the outer edges of it, creating a more confluent nodule within the center. So this is actually a case of sarcoidosis producing a micronodular lung disease. I think this case would have been a little bit challenging because you'd have been wondering if some of these nodules, like in this stuff out here, was related to central lobular disease, like tree and bud opacity. And I think really the key feature in this case was the fact that there was studying of the fissural and pleural surfaces and the fact that the nodules were kind of plump and forming lines within the lung parenchyma. Tying into the history of anterior uveitis, anterior uveitis you can see as a associated symptom of sarcoidosis.